Hello, hello, and welcome to Lawrence Plays, and today we're going to be taking another look at what's been going on in the last Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 stream. And well, it's been a slightly odd one, because personally, I didn't actually get all that much done in the last stream. I think I spent too much time chatting with, well, with chat, and which was, don't get me wrong, that was great, it was, it was a really nice stream, um, but it did mean that I didn't get quite as much accomplished as I normally do. However, fortunately, there are three other people playing the game as well, and they got quite a lot done, so let's take a look into what's been going on with them. The first thing to look at is the train system, and particularly where it goes from Norvis up into Norbit, because Tristan's been quite busy here, and you can probably hear a sort of a buzzing, crackling sound in the background. That's because he's come along putting all these Tesla coils all the way along here, and unlike in Red Alert, these are not weapons, these are not turrets, they're not there to blow stuff up. No, instead, they're to power things, and in this case, make our trains go much faster. So if I take a look inside this train, you can see it's it has an inventory section over here, not, not an inventory section, rather, a, an equipment grid, and he's chucked in um, eight ad advanced additional electric engines in there, and that means that each of the train gets a huge amount of extra speed and acceleration boost from it. And he's also then putting these energy absorbers, and you'll notice that occasionally when this train pulls in, you'll see, we'll probably get, I was going to say, we'll probably get, yeah, there you go, those lightning bolts coming out of it. And you saw how quickly that train accelerated there. That's the electric motors and the energy receivers working together. So the energy receivers, are they called res energy receivers? Energy absorbers will catch the lightning bolts from the Tesla coils and charge up the internal batteries in the train. And then, um, and then the train can then use that power to accelerate much harder and go up to much, much higher top speeds. So the trains are now blisteringly fast, um, and we're hoping that this is going to take the, a bit of the edge off some of the, our systems that are struggling to keep everything, struggling to provide everything that we need up in orbit. In order to get all of this set up, Tristan also increased the amount of all of these things we're building over in our sort of miscellaneous stuff building area over here. So I imagine that's been done through the magic of speed modules. Oh no, no, no there's two, two machines over here making, what are you, are you actually a, yes, you're an advanced additional electric engine, does it? Um, made from an addition. Oh, I see. There's a, a Mark One and a Mark Two. There we go. So he's added in an additional machine to be making the Mark Twos over here. So he's churning them them out at a much higher rate, and those are now being av made available to be put in the trains. He's also buffed the rate that the big batteries are being made at. So you'll see that here we've got the uh, the Tier One small batteries being made to make the, then being fed through to make the Tier One big batteries, and then that goes along to here to make the Tier Two big batteries, and then also to the Tier Three ones. But these require fancy stuff like superconductive cables. So he's decided it's not worth bringing a supply of superconductive cable down to the ground in order to make these, we might as well just go with the twos. And having seen the speed those trains are going at, uh, that's probably fine. Uh, if we ever track one down in a place where it's just reached a station that doesn't have a, a Tesla coil, uh, we can always have a look at how much battery power it has left and see how it's doing, but I suspect it's probably going to be sufficient. And yes, this means that our trains, as I say, move, now move much, much more quickly when they start going. You can see the speed these are flying around at, and the acceleration is phenomenal as well. And that means we get a bit of an improved throughput between the ground and space. And this is nice because a lot of the t a lot of our um, areas up in space they were they were struggling a little bit. The uh, the throughput wasn't quite as high as we would like it to be. Mostly because the time it takes for a train to come up the elevator, get to wherever it goes, unload, and then get back down to get, get another load and go around the loop, especially if it's stopping off here to go and get some trash, or even worse, over here to get some trash on to take down with it. This just extends the amount of time it takes for the train to do the loop, and therefore it struggles to have the throughput that we that we need for a lot of, the, a lot of these stations, especially now that we're getting it to go faster and faster. And also partly because a lot of the trains that come up will bring a mixture of stuff. So over here, for example, you can see there's nothing in this warehouse. But fortunately it's built up a supply of stuff down here. But down here you can see that we've got lots and lots of different things. Things, and so all of those are being brought up in a single train and so that means to an extent you need you, the train needs to go back and forth quite quickly because it's trying to supply a lot of different things particularly over here you can see that the uh, the rare metals are flowing very very steadily here nothing else is flowing right now but overall we get through a lot of resources over here and it's the same in all the science areas as well so over here we've got an we're bringing in uh, coal glass aeroframe scaffolds and, um, and beryllium ingots, they were all coming in on the same train to be fed into the astro science. Over here we've got the same sort of thing for energy science, we're bringing in lots of different things and they all have to come up in the same train and be passed down here. In an extreme case we've got massive numbers of different things that are being brought up for the uh, for the main bus over here in space and again that's all coming up in the same train although I think there might be two trains doing that one but they're all unloaded in the same place and they rattle through the bus over here but we can potentially when we're building trying to build a lot of things at once we can get through a huge amount of resources here. Most of the time it's not so bad because we're not really building science off this uh, bus. Okay, there's a little bit here in the, in the rocket science, but mostly, mostly this is for infrastructure, so the, the, the demands aren't as high. But from time to time, we can have quite a lot of stuff trying to be pulled through. 
He's also upgraded a number of the trains in orbit as well. So the science train that comes in here has had the uh, had the um, power generation and power and um, um, extra motors put into it. So it's now a lot faster than it used to be. He's done the same with the thermofluid train. And if we look around up here in space, you can see that there's lots of the uh, Tesla coils scattered around up here as well. And they these are all there to to, to recharge the trains when the, when they're in the area. So for example, maybe, maybe this one does as well. No, this one this one hasn't been upgraded. But the th the thermofluid train has. So we've got the we've got all the motors in there, and so we need to have these um, these coils along here to charge it back up again. And then if we have, for example, the um, the train that comes in here to drop off all the bits and pieces for making new memory cards, that will need to be charged up as well. So there's, he's put a lot of the Tesla, extra Tesla coils in to make sure everything carries on getting the boost that it needs and the batteries don't run flat. Finally, on the uh, zapping trains front, you can see these ones, these two over here are being uh, recharged as well by the uh, by the two Tesla coils next to them. He's also running through and doing all the trains that are being used for the core fragment processing. So there's lots and lots of trains that will come through this, this area over here. And he's keeping track of how many he's done by putting these numbers in next to them. So if we look, we look in this one, for example, this one has not been done yet. Um, but if we, look in, if we look at the station, we can see that there are 10 trains that handle this area. So he's done two of them so far, presumably. <laughs> over here, he's done one of the trains that comes to get the iron ore um, out, out of the four of them. So one of these trains has been upgraded and he'll gradually try and pick them off as they come through. And over here he's got a system that's calling for all the different bits and pieces to be brought over by bot so he can load the trains when they pull in. And that's quite a neat idea. So this one hadn't been done yet. Uh, it had it. So we're looking here, we see this one is, is not yet upgraded. And there's a system here that, I, I, looking at these, I imagine the way this is supposed to work is you rotate this, this inserter like that, then you rotate this inserter and it loads up the train with all the uh, all the bits and pieces that are supposed to go into it, like, well, like it hasn't, like it hasn't finished doing. I'm not sure why it hasn't put those bits in. Um, okay, so those have to go in. For the, right, so presumably you have to put them, yeah, you have to put the electric engines in first because they're big. Then you flick it over to blacklist. It'll put the rest of the stuff in. Then it'll start getting charged. Then we put that back over to whitelist and rotate it away again. Then we can rotate this one back round again. And we've got a combinator here, which is tracking the amount of stuff that's supposed to go into each locomotive. So then this, we set a filter on here and a stack size of one. That then passes through the bits and pieces that are supposed to go into the next train and ensures that everything will be in this box when the next train comes in, but only exactly the right things. So at the moment, you can see we've got an excess, an excess of energy absorbers in here. So we don't want to pass that through because then we'd end up with two of them in here and we'd, we'd overfill, the, uh, overfill the train. Now, having done that one, I also need to do this one as well. Oh, I, I did it wrong. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, I did it wrong. I, because because I forgot to turn that uh, that inserter first, I um, ended up putting too many too many motors in. So we turn this back around. Maybe we can. No, we won't even turn. It's it's all broken now. Fortunately, Tristan's probably paying more attention to when he does these things than I am. Um, ooh, let's turn that again away again. So yes, in, essentially the point is that you make the, you come along here. You make sure that this has got everything it needs to have to load up the train properly. At the moment, it doesn't have enough batteries, so we can't do so we can't run it yet. Uh, then you can load it. Then you can load into the train. Then once you've loaded the train, you can then load from here back into here to prime it again for the next one. But you need to remember to turn all the inserters around at the right time. Fortunately, I don't save after I've made a video, so the fact that I made a mess of that other train doesn't actually matter. <coughs> Sorry. And finally, on that front, it's notable that you've also put one of those loading systems in for all the stations in. The, uh, in the new iron smelting area. So again, all of the all the trains over here can be loaded up when they come in. If we if we look at one of these trains and we go, why are you so slow? We can go, okay, it's because you haven't had all of the all of your um all of your bits upgraded. And so we could then do um, how does this work? So so again, we rotate that one out of the way. We rotate that one up like that. It'll pass all the bits through that are in the uh, in 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 the chest here. Now I can flick this one over to blacklist. It'll pass through the other bits like that. Flick it back over to whitelist and rotate it. And then I can rotate this one to reload that chest with all the bits and pieces it's supposed to have. And then I should also, of course, do the same thing over here. Um, I'm not sure why. I guess this, this extra inserter here to pass it through is because there wasn't room to get all of the, the, the chests and this stuff right up next to the train over here. Which is fine. It doesn't really matter. It, it, it'll work fine like that. So again, rotate that like that. Rotate that like that. Passes through the, uh, the motors. You blacklist it. Passes the rest of them through, back over to whitelist, rotate it again, and then rota rotate that again around like that. And then we'll pass through the just the things that are meant to be going into the next train. So it's a nice simple system, but it means we can keep we can then boost all these trains relatively easily. And most importantly, we can do all of it from the NAVSAT rather than having to actually go there and put things into the train and make sure we get it right every single time. Last week, I talked fairly extensively about just how much junk and scrap and everything was clogging up the system down here. Well, as you look at it now, you can see that things are actually going really, really well. Yeah, there's a few there's a few memory cards, a few dead batteries coming through here for recycling. That's good. I mean, but there's no scrap. There's absolutely no scrap whatsoever. Uh, and so we've managed to actually clear out all of all of everything that was causing problems. So over down here, we've got these two storage tanks have been mostly emptied, and presumably a train will come back down again to pick up some more from here once they once they fill back up again. Oh, do we have a system that's turning the station off? 
No, it's always turned on. It's just the train at the other end is still trying to unload. That's, that's fair enough. As long as we're getting rid of it fast enough, which we seem to be, that's probably okay. And so, emptying those tanks has meant we've managed to then process through all of the contaminated scrap and therefore and dump it all out as scrap to be dealt with up here. And this has meant that we've now managed to get rid of, as you can see, absolutely all of the scrap. And the reason we've managed this sort of ridiculous level of, um, of tidiness and efficiency is actually because the science has, has stopped and broken. If we look over here, you can see that these uh, labs aren't running. And that's because the research we're doing at the moment, the Nexus requires Deep Space Science 3. We don't have any Deep Space Science 3 packs coming in here. So, what if we cancel that and that one, both of both, both of those because they both require Deep Space Science 3 and then maybe we could start researching something else like perhaps carrying on with Energy Weapon Damage 13 because this only requires Deep Space 1 and various other things. So if we resume this one we can see now the, uh, the, the labs have kicked back in so we're going to start pulling some science packs through and that means that eventually we're going, to, we're going to have to then send off a train to go and get some more of the uh, whichever catalogs we're running through. And so we'll probably see the system kick back in again at some point in the future. But it's going to be a little while until it does because there's lots and lots of buffer in the belts and everything around here. So it's going to be a little while, but eventually we will start to have um, everything everything start flowing again in the science areas. And, and that means that if science flows, then we need to produce science packs and that will allow us to create a lot more trash that's coming along here. While it was running, I did notice that the big problem, and the, or the, the thing that was taking the longest to catch up, was the material science over here. So I'd, I'd extend, I'd upgraded all the belts all the way along here to deep space belts. So we'd, we'd double the amount of throughput on these belts, and this is where they all merge onto the sort of the main spine in the middle. But material science produces so much scrap uh, that this wasn't really enough for it to empty it at, at a decent speed. And so I upgraded this one as well. And as you can see, it's probably unnecessary in the long run because okay, eventually if we left it running for long enough, then maybe it would dump it. it to get rid of it all but it was it was taking so long that I got a bit fed up and wanted to speed it up a bit so what this belt has been extended has been uh, doubled in speed all the way up to here and at this point the, the, be the belt sort of all fan out a little bit so you, you can you can mix the uh, the waste between the different belts a little bit more it's not prioritized quite so much um, but up here this one what this one was also jamming up so I've up upgraded this one and it's for one very specific science pack over here the Pressure containment data was generating enormous amounts of scrap. And you can see for this, for every one pressure containment data card we make, we also produce 50 scrap. That's ridiculous. That's I think that might even be worse than the infamous train crashing data. This one here, where you make a locomotive and then you run it into an iridium girder. Uh, this one produces 25, uh, 25 data and 1500 scrap, which is actually slightly more. So for an equivalent amount, we'd be producing 1250 scrap from the other recipe for 25, 25 of those. And this one produces 1500. So it's, it is a bit more. However, train crash data is not required by other science packs uh, beyond, the, um, beyond, beyond the material one, whereas the, the uh, pressure containment data down here is. So this one, as well as being required for the broad material catalog, is, is also required for the matter containment data. And we're using quite a lot of that one up because that's the one we're using to make the particle stream these days, I think. So we're getting through large quantities of that, which meant we're getting through a lot of this over here and trying to fill up a train load of it at a time. And so we're get, making, trying to make a lot of it. And so this, this 50 scrap for every time you build some was really starting to wear the system down or really st we're, we're struggling to get rid of it all. And that's why we've now got all these accelerated belts down here to get rid of it a bit more quickly. Interestingly, the first place I noticed that we were having problems with the scrap was down here in the matter processing. And in fact, Matter One is still is still running over here. And Tristan says that he'd uh, gone in here and he'd, he'd done some tweaking of the uh, of the priorities on on some of the splitters in order to get rid of the uh, the junk a bit quicker from from make for the, that was being created making all these things for Matter One. So I imagine that over here, yeah, we've got some priorities like this, this priority here, pulling the pulling the scrap out of here first before letting the uh, dead cards come in from below is the sort of thing he's been doing just to try and squeeze it through a bit faster. Now the downside of this is that we do seem to be creating this. Um, this scrap faster than this belt is capable of taking it away, which means we're not getting through. Well, we're barely getting through these other data cards that are coming in from below. Um, they are squeezing through very, very slowly. There's a bit of a gap, but it is it is problematic. Um, maybe this maybe this belt along here also also needs to be upgraded to a deep space one. Um, this is getting quite expensive in belt upgrades, but also we have a lot of scrap and we do need to get rid of it all because we do have. We have problems with it. Um, I do also notice that the right hand side of this belt is not really being used to its full potential. So perhaps some side balancing along here would also help a, little, a lot to get rid of all of the, uh, the scrap from, um, fr from up here. That said, what he's done has clearly worked because we, these machines are running flat out now. We are, we've got enough of the data cards coming in along here. We're making the material one uh, um, packs as quickly as, we, as quickly as we can. They're gradually filling up the station over here. And the belt is 
<laughs> I want to say is mostly getting rid of all the stuff that's coming through. It, it it mostly is. Things don't seem to be. But this, I'm pretty sure this is getting longer. So I think some side balancing is going to be required along here because we are seriously underutilizing this belt. Exactly where we want to put that in is slightly open to debate. We'll have to have to have a bit a little bit of a play around with it. Maybe on all of these inputs along here, there's 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 plenty of room out here to uh, to make sure everything is going on to both sides. But that does mean we now ha actually have a supply of um, scrap and contaminated scrap coming through and being popping out here at the top, and oh, lots and lots of uh, memory cards of various types. So this is because the science has kicked back in again. Now we're starting to produce. A bit of a bit of waste, and that means that now over here the, um, the the processing facilities are starting to work again. And one of the other upgrades I did, with this, this was following uh, some suggestions in in chat, was to upgrade this 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 used to be a single chest, a single square chest. I've upgraded it to a strong box, as a two by two chest. And that means I can then use the uh, the deep space splitter on the input here on the, on the output to allow us to get a potentially get a full deep space belt of card pouring out along here to be formatted. Because before we couldn't do that. We only had, we, Tristan had upgraded this belt, but it was still being fed by a normal space loader. Now it's being fed by two space loaders. We can get we we can if we get enough um, junk data cards through, we can fill this belt up completely. So yeah, there's a. But now you can see yes, there's there's lots of stuff coming in. It's all it's, it's getting it's getting passed down through here. It's getting processed. All the machinery is kicking back into 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 action, and we're starting and and because we simply because we've started to do science again. It's, it still impresses me just how many um, memory cards are coming through here to be reused. And now part of this is because we're bringing in the the, uh, the junk ones to be recycled. Part of it is because the uh, the science processing in particular kicks out a lot of um, perfectly good memory cards that can then just be passed in back in over here. But that means that we've now got well we're we're running this we're running this uh, belt here to to provide new memory cards whenever we've got less than seven thousand in the storage system here. And okay, we're only at ten and a half thousand at the moment, but still it's quite a lot higher than the than the the production from over here so we are getting we are recycling and reusing a huge number of the memory cards which is actually quite nice it's good good to see that they're uh, they're being passed around and, and, and recycled because that means we have a much lower requirement on everything over here all of these things in order to make it so we can stop producing quite so many of these rough data substrates and the red circuits that previously we were pouring through an absolute flood of them and that was especially bad when we were expanding out and creating new science areas because then you'd set up a new station and you'd immediately request I don't know 10,000 or you'd immediately request a train load of, um, of, of memory cards which is 5,000 then probably a second train load as well so it would pull 10,000 out of the system and over here that would take ages for this to catch up with and looking at the these numbers over here you can see to an extent the sheer scale of the recycling so yeah okay it says we've produced four four million data storage substrates over the last uh, 50 hours and we've produced 3.6 million blank data cards so you go okay those numbers are relatively close so maybe you're producing them fairly straight but no it actually takes four of these polished data source storage substrates to make one data card. So actually, we've made one million uh, data cards over the um, over the course of the last 50 hours, and therefore we recycled another 2.6 million of them. So each data card, on average, gets used about three times before it breaks. Just using these numbers as a very very rough uh, estimation, uh, it's not that's not going to be accurate at all because there's huge numbers of them out there on on the belt somewhere and in, in, in go, flowing back and f back and forth around in the system. But it, you can you can get an impression that. We've made only slightly over a quarter of the number of cards that we've used, so that's quite that gives you quite a nice impression of how much recycling of these cards is going on, and how unfeasible it would be to try and make all of these cards from scratch every single time if you didn't get to recycle them. Last week we took a look at the uh, systems over on Snowdrop and how Tristan realised that he'd got crazy, crazy amounts of oil that he didn't know what to do with. So being produced over here, he needs the heavy oil that's produced up here to process the cryonite. So that's being kept, hung on to, that's being piped away down here and going into the cryonite production. And I think there's some additional, might be some additional oil processing going on here. Yeah, there's a I think there's a supply of oil coming in from somewhere just to keep the system running as well. And that means that because he only needs the heavy oil, he's got a load of light oil and uh, petroleum gas left over. Because even though he's doing the heavy oil um, processing, Processing recipe over here, and that does produce more heavy oil than the other two, and more, and in higher ratio. He's still got 30 light oil and 20 petroleum gas to deal with every time he makes some heavy oil, and some of that can be made into plastic and sulfur for strategic sulfuring and plasticizing purposes, I'm sure. But a lot of it is just waste, and he doesn't he doesn't have anything to do with it. So he's, he's at the moment he's been turning it into um, solid fuel over here. And then turning that into processed fuel in all of these plants over here. So you can see, you'll see over here the tank has emptied out a bit. It's now got down to 19,000. We're pumping it through here whenever there's 20,000. So there's a little bit of headroom, and that means he's got enough left over to make the plastic and the, and the uh, sulfur if he needs to. But then any excess will come through here and be turned into solid fuel. So you can see he's got through the excess there. This warehouse is empty. It's just 
It's just running nicely. He's making a certain amount of processed fuel. That's and, and that has all been dealt with. It's flow, flowed down this belt down here and gone into the warehouse here. It's got to the point where there is no longer a steady flow of solid fuel coming along here. So that means this belt here, is, which is triggering this one over here, is now no, is now actually has now gone green. You can see the green light on it, and that means it will run and let stuff through. So if he's trying to make any more cryonite, it will be allowed. Or if he needs any more cryonite, it will be allowed to flow through. However, he's also got a limiter on the belts here. These these two, which are watching for there being uh, only running when there's less than eight thousand cryonite in this warehouse. So if we look in here, you can see that there is eight thousand in there, and that's why these have stopped. And this is to make sure there's always room for all of the byproducts, whether that's processed fuel coming down from here, whether it's sand and metal ores and stone and so on coming in along the belts over here from the core processing. He he wants to make sure there's always room for that to go into here, and he never jams up the uh, the removal of the byproducts by putting through too much of the thing we actually want. So this means there's a now a, a nice mixed supply of everything available down here. So when the train comes down, it can pick all of that up. And if we look at the opposite end, well, you can see the train has come up. It's filled up the uh, the warehouse here. It's filled up all of these warehouses. There is loads of cryonite available for collection. We've got, uh, yeah, we've got more than 60,000 available there. And over in Norbit, the ship has landed here. We have a decent supply of it. However, it looks like the ship is waiting for something. And I'm not sure what. It looks like there's a wiring problem over here. So we've got the, um, we've got the, we're looking for four ticks over here before we can send a launch command. And we've got three being created over here. There's an output signal there because we've, we've loaded everything into the ship. We've fueled the ship. We've got all the cryonite out of the ship. And then over here, we've got another one saying everything has been unloaded that should be unloaded. So there's a fourth tick there. But I notice when I mouse over this one, I don't, I'm not getting a green highlight going across. I'm, oh, it's going across on the red. What's, what's going on here? This is, this is a bit weird. Okay, so it's being sent across on the red signal there. So that's coming across to here and then fed into the, and then that's not being fed into the, into the combinator down here by the looks of it. But up here, all th yes, all three of these are feeding their signals in. So, so it looks like the red cable that comes across here isn't going into the input of this combinator and probably should be. So let's try, let's try that. That goes from there to there. Then we've got the fourth tick. Yes, we have. And so the ship should now uh, leave like that. And now it can fly over to Snowdrop and pick up some of that um, some of that cryonite we were seeing and bring it over and then start to reload these warehouses over here. Because we okay, okay, we do have um, 160,000 of it over here. But there's room for more, so we might as well keep we might as well keep the ship running and try and keep things a bit a bit a bit fuller. This is almost certainly linked to the other part of what Tristan said, where he came in. He was he was uh, he was working on upgrading this ship because it was apparently leaving prematurely because previously it was running an older version of the spaceship system, and so it was only checking for whether it's loaded everything, the fuel level, and whether it's unloaded all of the uh, primary resource. It wasn't checking with this system as to whether it had unloaded all of the uh, the byproducts that were being brought over, and so particularly when previously he was trying to ship over enormous amounts of well byproducts, so loads and loads. Of of processed fuel especially and probably a bit of sand and other things as well but mostly the processed fuel to clear out that system and there wasn't very much cryonite the chances the chances were fairly high that he'd end up unloading all of the cryonite and then there'd still be processed fuel that was being churned through and so he'd uh, he, this, this this ship needed needed the upgrade to the system that watches. Well, you you, you saw the video that came out on Thursday. Uh, the watches for all of the uh, every, everything being unloaded from the ship first before it allows the ship to, to leave. It just turned out there was a red cable missing over here on the other side. So that's that's a, a fix we'll do in the next in the next uh, stream. Um, but at least it's a nice easy one to sort out. Speaking of spaceships and the spaceport, we've been having trouble for a while with insufficient sulphur be arriving in, in, in the uh, spaceport in order to, to keep, because there are so many places that need it in large quantities. Now, Agnair, as I've said before, is, is just a sink, so we don't need to worry about keeping that topped up. But along here, Big Rid and, um, and Talos and uh, Stardust and I think, and, and Talos again, all need large quantities of sulphur, especially Stardust. Stardust has been ripping through crazy, crazy quantities of it. And having just the, um, and having it brought up as part of what gets brought up by this train has not been enough for us. And so um, it's been bringing that, it's been bringing up some sulphur, sure. Uh, but it's also been busy bringing up ice and rare metals and everything else that gets poured through the system along here. And so it was just struggling to keep up and it couldn't, it couldn't manage it. And so, I've taken sulphur off the shopping list here, and is now a dedicated ship that just brings up sulphur. And this is a very, very simple ship. It goes, it, it goes down to, it goes down to the ground. It fills up with sulphur. It comes up to here. It empties out the sulphur. And because we're getting through so much of it, I thought, let's not try to be clever about this and have the ship do a million different things and have all the bells and whistles. Let's just go 
dead straightforward. Bring up the sulfur and then take and then go down and get some more sulfur. Now that said, now that we've filled up the uh, the buffer along here. I guess it could be it could be added in to have to go all over here and pick up some of the trash and take that away. Pick up take some of the byproducts away if necessary. And that would be probably be quite useful because it, especially as it's already over here, so it wouldn't be too much of a diversion. And that now that we've filled some buffers up, we seem to have enough sulfur. But at the time, I just wanted to get as much up here as possible because we had such a shortage of it. And now, but now we have 25,000 in there. We have a load more down. Well, I guess we do have a bit more down here. Um, because because we've had a Taras ship come in and, and unload it, I guess. And so the idea is now that the system will pour all the sulfur down here. That, that we've got a, a bypass here that, it does, that ignores these two warehouses and then passes it up just to the uh, sp splitter here. So it can, be, it can flow along there at full speed when a spaceship needs it. But also, we have this buffer in here of 12,000, which is apparently not sufficient because this belt filled up, but um, okay. And then another 2,000 in here. And the idea being that we use what's in these warehouses first because that's what's been brought over from Taras. And then when that runs out, we can then pull as much through as we need from here. Now because the science hasn't been running, there's going to have been a massive shortage of Naquium processing going on, there's going to be a shortage of everything else going on, so we're not going to have been churning through the sulphur quite as quickly as we normally would. But now that I've poked the, uh, the energy weapon and got that, got, got that one running again, maybe that will at least start some of the Naquium being used. And that will then sort of pull this whole system back into, into some semblance of, uh, of, um, of prioritization and using things up in the right order. <laughs> I guess we'll see. As it is, we've, uh, we've actually there's only there's almost no sulfur been passed over here to Agnea recently, at least not since the ship last flowed. As part of this, I've been keeping a bit of an eye on Stardust. I haven't actually done made any tweaks out here because the system is. It's working. Um, we just have some buffering problems. I mean, you, you'll notice over here that we have we have got virtually full warehouses here, but the system has ground to a halt. I, I think I, I actually I think I did nudge up the amount of sulfur we're requesting a little bit over here. It's now twelve thousand instead of ten thousand, just to try and top it up a little bit. But yeah, I mean things are kind of working. A ship arrives, it will easily fill up and be able to take it away again. Which I just want a bit more sulfur to arrive, and that means I need the ships to flow a bit more. And as you can see, there's none on their way at the moment because we're just not using the Naquium up, and if we're not using the Naquium up, we can't make the system flow, and therefore we can't fill up the buffers, and therefore nothing happens, and it's all a bit, eh, it's all a bit meh, really. We need, we need, we need a demand in order to keep the supply running, in order to, to just get the system up and and stockpile and stockpile properly. But you know that doesn't matter. It's working. I had a look at Talos. That's working as well. Kothar, on the other hand, was having some issues, uh, and these were mostly down to um, a lack of, of a lack of vulcanite being brought in. And if you're not bringing in enough vulcanite, then the vulcanite doesn't make it down to here. It doesn't. You, you don't get to make the red beads, and therefore you don't get to clean out your water. You don't get to make more of the. Um, more of the blast cake over here. And if you're not making the blast cake, you can't make the iridium over here. And if you can't make the iridium, you can't fill the spaceship back up again. And if you can't fill the spaceship back up again, it won't go off and get more vulcanite. So, you know, you've got that sort of loop in there. So Mike has solved this problem by asking for more vulcanite, you know. It's, it's, it's a simple solution. Um, the, the balance was just set wrongly. So now, now that's been bumped up a bit. Hopefully it'll now be okay and we'll get everything we need coming through there. He also discovered that there was a mineral water pump somewhere that was that was blocking the um, the output of um, of, of the uh, mineral water from the core processing. I think I found that in the last video actually, and I, I flipped one of these round and it all starts, magically started working again. So uh, yeah, Mike has now replicated that in the real game, and now things, as you can see down here, things are working nicely. We're producing little bits of um, ore and stuff as a junk over here. We're able to get all of this iridite out of the uh, the core processing as well, and that seems to be the uh, majority of what's being used at the moment. This whole system is actually seems to be running quite slowly. I'm not sure why, because this is running at about the speed I expect it to run at, but these are running very, very slowly. Is it because the, maybe maybe the balance is off? Maybe because we've been going through and upgrading all of the productivity modules, that's thrown off the uh, the balance between the inputs and output and, and inputs, mid stages, outputs, and so on. Uh, or maybe it's just that Mike overbuilt. It's it's kind of hard to tell sometimes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this this system the system CA yeah, is running well enough. We we are producing uh, iridium. You can see that looking back over the last 10 hours, well, we had a we had a spike there. That was probably, I think that was because we manually sent a ship over and it quickly used up all the vulcanite and stopped again. Then we had another spike used up all the, and using up the vulcanite, but it's kept going. It seems to be declining gradually, but hopefully that's just it's settling down and it will carry on going at about this sort of speed. I guess we'll, we'll, we'll find out. But we are now making it at a nice steady 300 per minute uh, over at the, on the other side. We're trying, we trying to use it as fast as we can. Uh, there's, a bit of a, there's a bit of a struggle. If we look at the graph over on Norvis, you can see that we are, very, we are completely out of, it, of um, iridium at the moment. And that means that over here in the um, in, in the intermediates production area, there's no iridium being brought in. All of this all of this is struggling. So a lot of the factory is at this point struggling for important stuff like iridium girders. Uh, we're doing what we can, but until the iridium fl flow and supply 
declogs properly and starts to fly, and, and, and we start to produce a lot more of it. Uh, there's only so much we can do. We'll, 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 we'll have to wait for the buffers to fill up, but I think this is something that is probably going to be worth having a good look at in the next stream, because it's, it, it is, a, I think this is definitely a bottleneck at the moment, and I think I'm going to have a look at this in tomorrow's video as well. Speaking of, I think this is a good place to end the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on all the other videos coming out, and make sure you watched uh, yesterday's video, which is the one about um, making, about how our spaceships work, and how Mark's, uh, extremely clever but also complicated spaceship system allows us to transport resources around all over the place with a relatively small number of spaceships. As I say, there'll be more videos over the weekend catching up on what's been going on in Factorio with K2SC, so plenty plenty to go on there. And then on Monday we'll be back with another stream where we should be carrying on, fixing all these problems, sort of, and carrying on, just trying to push forward, get, maybe get Deep Space Science 4 up and running, who knows. Uh, we're still pl pl playing with the Arcospheres, which again I'm going to talk about later. Um, and then on Wednesday I'll be back with a satisfactory stream where I shall probably be beating on some more aluminium because I guess that's what, how, how things are going to be for a little while. So please come along and join that one if you haven't already. It'd be great to see more of you there. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time. Bye bye.